Jujutsu Kaisen has been thoroughly enjoyable for the fans over the course of the last few months. As Gojo finally returned, fans were incredibly excited to see him go up against none other than the King of Curses, Sukuna. This fight was one that fans had been waiting ages for, and it certainly delivered, for the most part. However, at the end of it, fans were left in a state of shock when, through inexplicable means, Sukuna was able to kill Gojo, and finally, the strongest modern sorcerer died. With the fall of Gojo, fans know that there are lots of things that need to be addressed. Gojo is a very significant character in the series, and from here onwards his character can take three paths. The first part that the character can take is to stay dead, and while that is possible, it would leave quite a lot of holes in the story itself. The second possibility for Gojo is to return to life once again, which is very much possible. However, there is also a third possibility, and that is Kenjaku taking over his body. Before we begin, please throw the like button into a pool of lava, and please subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications, so you don't miss any daily uploads. Kenjaku is one of the biggest villains in the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen. He's the mastermind who has pulled strings for most things from behind the shadows, and it wouldn't be a stretch to say that he's an even bigger villain than Sukuna. At the very least, he is certainly a better villain than him, as his plotline is extremely intriguing and his goals are very sinister as well. Sukuna lives and dies for fighting, and Kenjaku seeks something more. He wants to create a new world that resembles the times of the Golden Age of Sorcery once again. He wants to force human evolution, and he wants to achieve this by becoming one with Tengen. By doing that, he would then lead the world in a state of utter chaos, just as Shibuya was very recently in the story. To see his plan through, Kenjaku has taken quite a lot of steps in the past. His biggest breakthrough came when he was able to take over the body of Geto Suguru. Through this body, he was able to use cursed spirit manipulation, and that is how he achieved everything that he has right now. Through cursed spirit manipulation, he was able to take in the likes of Mahito and gain access to idol transfiguration as well. His plans do not stop there, however. Kenjaku has even more sinister plans that he will see through as the story progresses. Kenjaku is an ancient sorcerer who has managed to stay alive with his curse technique that allows him to crawl into the body of another person and completely take over it. Essentially, he becomes the brain of another body and completely gains access to everything about the person, including their memories. He is also able to access all forms of jujutsu using this ability as well. Over the course of centuries, he has taken several bodies and used them to the fullest. There are certainly some that stand out more than the others. The very first one that fans know quite a lot about is none other than Noritoshi Kamo. Fans know him to be one of the leaders of the Kamo clan who was also believed to be the stain of this entire family. However, little did the people know that the person actually behind his wrongdoings was none other than Kenjaku himself. He manipulated his body for quite a long time until he eventually found another host. At some point in his life, Kenjaku also took over the body of Yuji's mom Kaori Itadori and also gave birth to Yuji. It is unknown which body he inhabited after this. However, ultimately, he found his way to the body of Suguru. This happened after the night parade of a 100 demons. While Gojo certainly did kill off Suguru, he did not completely destroy the body, and that allowed Kenjaku to take over it. Ever since then, he has inhabited this body and gained access to every single memory of it. Along with all the cursed techniques and abilities, Kenjaku can most definitely take over the body of Gojo. For him, the only prerequisite is for the body to not be completely destroyed. That is most likely the only thing that he needs in order to take control over it. As fans know, Kenjaku simply looks like a brain with teeth that can likely crawl inside the head of another person. Once the top of the skull is removed, Kenjaku most likely replaces their brain and sits in its place instead. Gojo currently is lying on the battlefield, and while he has been chopped in two, his body is more or less good enough for Kenjaku to crawl inside. While he will most likely not do it in broad daylight in the middle of the battlefield, there is a very strong possibility for it to happen. Currently, he has access to Suguru's body, and while that body is very powerful, it is nothing compared to that of Gojo. By all means, Gojo is one of the strongest in the entire world, arguably the strongest despite losing to Sukuna. It must be remembered that Sukuna himself had a ton of help, especially from Megumi and his Ten Shadows technique in this fight. In a regular one-on-one, -on -one, Gojo could very well have emerged as the victor. For Kenjaku to pass over this opportunity would be extremely stupid. He has the chance to take over the body of the strongest sorcerer, and he is certainly not going to miss this. With a body such as that of Gojo, he can bring to life every single goal of his and take the world back to the era that he desperately craves, the golden age of sorcery. 
Another very interesting thing to note is that before the battle between Sukuna and Gojo began, Henjaku asked Sukuna to promise him something. What exactly this promise entailed is not known at this point in time. However, when one thinks about it, there isn't much that Kenjaku would want from Sukuna. It is highly likely that this promise was that if he was able to defeat Gojo, he would let him take over the body, and that together, they would work towards their individual and collective goals. It appears that Sukuna has delivered on that end completely. By killing Gojo and preserving his upper half, he has given Kenjaku the perfect opportunity to come in and take over the body of the strongest modern sorcerer. Now it is up to Kenjaku to make way and take over Gojo's body. If Kenjaku does take over Gojo's body, well it's not looking good for our heroes. First I need to address what the current situation is now. We got Gojo chopped in half and believed to be dead at this point. And is the hero's absolute strongest fighter. The only man that is capable of defeating Sukuna in a one versus one. I know Gojo lost that fight and admitted that even if Sukuna didn't have Megumi's Ten Shadows technique, he doesn't believe he would have won, and Sukuna was holding back. But if you actually saw that fight between the two, Gojo was definitely violenting Sukuna in a three versus one battle, or should I say four versus one battle, and Sukuna was definitely depending on Daddy Maharaga to defeat Gojo. So this just contradicts everything that Gojo admitted in the afterlife. And with Gojo gone, things are not looking good for our heroes, and with Kashima one of their strongest fighters, fighting four-armed Sukuna, the chances of Kashima winning this battle are low, extremely low, well I do believe he will do some serious damage to Sukuna but he will lose, and Hikari fighting Sukuna's servant, oh my god I forgot her name. Yeah with him fighting her, the chances of him winning are low too, remember Hikari depends on luck to win his battles, his luck will run out eventually, and the day will come. If Hikari's luck run out and he dies, well that's definitely not gonna look good for our heroes, and he's one of the strongest fighters for the good guys, and if Kashimo loses and manages to deal some damage to Sukuna, and the others try defeating Sukuna in this weakened state, remember Sukuna won't go down without a fight, and what's worse if Kenjaku takes over Gojo's body and team up with Sukuna, well our heroes are definitely dead. Okay let's say this, the main cast does defeat Sukuna in his weakened state. Then what are they gonna do with Kenjaku in Gojo's body? I don't see how the good guys will defeat Sukuna and Kenjaku. Maybe Gurger Akutami will give Yuji a massive power-up that will allow Yuji to defeat Sukuna and Kenjaku. But this power-up really needs to be insane if it will allow him to defeat Sukuna. I myself I still think Gojo will make a comeback, or Yuta Okatsu will assist in defeating Kenjaku, and Yuji will defeat Sukuna. But for them to do this, they need an insane power-up. Well guys we are done. Tell me what are your thoughts, leave your answers in the comment section below, and please throw the like button into the ocean. And please subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any daily uploads.